Iran's Islamic Revolution deprived the West of a powerful friend, the Shah of Iran. Soon, it threatened to destabilize more of the West's oil-rich allies. So when Saddam Hussein launched a war on Iran, the West supplied him with intelligence and arms. Saddam had chemical weapons, and he used them. The commanders of Iran's Revolutionary Guard inspected the battlefield. Iran demanded that the United Nations act. It was a violation of the Convention of Geneva. Vraiment, the Conseil de Sécurité n'était pas intéressé à se mettre à dos, n'est-ce pas, le régime de Saddam Hussein. Yek chenin janayat mostemer ri salha edame dasht. Unha aksalamel monaseb nishon nadadan ba se charmandegi shuray amniyat bud. It's a very hard balance. They're using chemical weapons. So you want them to stop using the chemical weapons. At the same time, you don't want to see Iran win the war. The hatred between Iran and the West had become so strong that the rules that govern how states behave were set aside. In this program, leaders from both sides describe how they made decisions and then tried to undo the damage they had caused. In 1982, Iran's Revolutionary Guard created what would prove to be the most effective instrument to spread the Islamic Revolution. The story began when Israel invaded Lebanon. We were a member of the army. I was a member of Tehran, a member of the army. I said, go to Lebanon and go there to the Nira'amadakon. But first, the generals had to put their plan to the supreme leader, the Imam Ayatollah Khomeini. Sepah pishnad dat ke ma barat defa sar zemin Lebanon yek az yegan hamun ro unja befarestim ke az vurud artesh Israel be Beirut jilo giri kone. Imam gufta nakhir. Pelan shuma in kar nakonid. Shayad masan mekhan masir ro marhaf kone. Shayad jebe Lebanon baaz kardan ke tu in jang mashi kasb khorim. Lazo gufta abar kar ishe tamam bokonid va baad berit unja. The generals had to persuade the imam that helping their fellow Shia Muslims defeat Israel would spread the Islamic revolution. They enlisted the help of a grand ayatollah. من بهشون گفتم آقا الان انتظار دارن که شما نسبت به لبنان نماینده بفرستید و شما به عنوان جهان تشیع و جهان اسلام ازتون انتظار ها امام موافقت کردن فرمودن که ما که نمیتونیم همیشه نیرو از ایران اونجا اعزام کنیم بیایم آموزش ها و تجارب خودمون رو منتقل کنیم و نیرو رو برگردانیم اون موقع بود که ما هزار تا نیرو برده بودیم به لبنان که در یه منطقه ای نزدیک مرز لبنان و سوریه خواهش کردیم یه پادگان خالی کردن به ما دادن نیروها رو بردیم اونجا که جوانه لبنان رو آموزش بدیم اتو بعدا خودشون هم اتو خودشون هم مبسطلا مدرب یا آموزش دهنده تربیت کردیم و دیگه خودشون این کار کردن This new group would call itself the party of God Hezbollah قرروا أن يفيدون في إنشاء المقاومة. عن التدريبات أو الخبرة أو الخبراء العسكريين اللي كانوا يعني يستفيد منهم شباب ونخ. 
كان نفس حضور الإيرانيين معنويا كان مهم جدا لشبابنا والناس اللي خدمنا في مواجهة العدو الإسرائيلي که این کار رو کردیم و این نیروی مقدس و قابل احترام به نام حزب الله تشکیل شد. حزب الله became the most effective Lebanese fighting force. America had sent the Marines to Lebanon as part of a multinational force to try to restore order. I was awakened at about two o'clock in the morning and told that a suicide bomber had bombed our marine barracks and we lost 243 Marines. At the same time, he was told another bomber had hit a French barracks, killing 58. These attacks shook the leaders of both countries. We woke up the president. It was the low point of the Reagan presidency for me, for the president, and all of us. America had been humiliated three years before when Iran seized the U.S. embassy in Tehran. America saw this bombing as a terrorist attack, the largest in its history, and at the hand of Iran. The vice president was dispatched to Lebanon. We're not going to let a bunch of insidious terrorists, cowards, shape the foreign policy of the United States. For four months, Washington stood firm. But faced with more threats, the U.S. moved its forces out of Lebanon to ships in the Mediterranean. We knew we had to take the Marines out. So we left, and I think we left with our dauber down. I had to hand it to the French. They left, too. But they marched out with their band playing. خروجها من لبنان يشكل بالنسبة لنا انتصار. A group calling itself Islamic Jihad claimed responsibility for both attacks, but the U.S. and France blamed Hezbollah and Iran. بله مکم اکوی که عادو بودیم ولی ما اتلاع نداریم که از همین های سوریه نکردند. ملت لبنان توسط یک ارتش خارجی اشغال شد برای دفاع از خودش شهید داد. This success in exporting Khomeini's revolution came at a high price. America added Iran to its list of state sponsors of terrorism, which brought economic sanctions, making it harder for Tehran to buy arms. In Lebanon, groups linked to Hezbollah took to kidnapping Westerners. Soon, more than 30 were held hostage. All their governments searched for ways to deal with the problem. We believe it's wrong to bargain with terrorists or over hostages because it only encourages more violence and more kidnapping. The French president had a more nuanced view. I don't think we can negotiate with ceux qui s'adonnent à ce crime. C'est un problème extrêmement délicat puisqu'il s'agit de vies humaines. In March 1986, President Mitterrand received an ultimatum from the hostage takers. Unless their demands were met, one of the French hostages would be killed. It was a week before France's parliamentary elections. Il faut tout faire pour ne rien céder aux ravisseurs, mais tout faire du côté des États. Comme on n'est pas dupe et qu'on sait que c'est l'Iran qui est derrière et qui euh, attise ce contentieux avec l'Irak, donc on va agir sur l'Iran. France urgently needed a back channel to Iran. J'étais donc assis avec mes amis en train de dîner quand la maîtresse de maison vient me dire à l'oreille « On vous demande au téléphone ». J'étais très, très surpris, j'avais dit à personne que j'étais là, je me lève, Je vais au, euh, au, vers le combiné, je prends le téléphone et j'entends une voix qui dit « Ici, François Mitterrand, et je vous appelle pour voir si vous pouvez faire quelque chose pour nous. 
Eric Rouleau was a former Le Monde correspondent in Tehran. President Mitterrand asked him to use his contacts with Ayatollah Khomeini's inner circle. Je pensais que on ne pouvait pas jouer avec les intérêts de la France et la vie de certains Français. Five days later, Rouleau was in Tehran, a city at war. He went straight to the headquarters of the Revolutionary Guard. As man خواست که در آزادی گروگان‌های فرانسوی تو لبنان کمک بکنه. و ما اول پرسیدم برای چی کمک بکنه؟ اول ما تو نفوذ نداریم. Vous pourriez peut-être obtenir quelque chose uniquement en disant que le gouvernement iranien souhaite faire libérer les otages français. Il a souri, il m'a dit oui, en effet, nous avons des amis là-bas, nous pourrons. Mais à supposer que nous puissions obtenir la libération des otages, qu'est-ce que vous nous rendrez en échange? Et je suis en vacances, je me suis dit que je suis en vacances, 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 Très bien, nous vous devons un milliard de dollars. Nous sommes prêts à négocier le règlement de cette affaire et vous serez tout à fait satisfait des résultats, j'en suis sûr. They seem to have a deal that could get the hostages out. Nous rentrons à l'ambassade heureux comme des, comme des rois, en se frottant les mains, en se disant voilà, tout va très bien et nous envoyons un télégramme. À Paris, c'était un télégramme général, mais enfin encourageant, encourageant. Bon, je répercute ça à Mitterrand, qui était assez content. Et cela paraissait proche de réussir au point qu'il est arrivé qu'un jour, Roland Dumas se, se rendit à l'aéroport de Villacoublay pour aller chercher des euh, euh, otages. Et vers 3 heures du matin, un coup de fil. On vient me réveiller, on me donne le combiné, et j'ai une voix très sèche au bout du fil. Ici, Rafik Doust. Monsieur Rouleau, c'est terminé. Notre accord tombe à l'eau. Il n'y aura pas d'échange. The explanation lay in Lebanon. فترة انتخابات فرنسية جاءنا من يبلغنا أن المعارضة في فرنسا ترغب أن لا يتم لا يصار إلى إطلاق رهائن فرنسيين قبل الانتخابات الفرنسية. هلو رزومي لا سيتويسيون لا فاسون سويفانت جي روفو ميس انترلوكوتور ايرانيان كي نوز اون دي سيتي با بوسيبل كو لو مارشي نو تني با Là où nous nous offrez 10, vos concurrents, c'est-à-dire l'opposition française, nous offre 100. The opposition won the French election, but it was two more years before the last French hostages came home. They were greeted by the election winner, Prime Minister Jacques Chirac. Je remercie le gouvernement iranien pour son aide et pour ces diverses interventions qui ont permis la libération de nos compatriotes. Chirac has always denied that his party tried to delay the hostage release while in opposition. J'affirme simplement que tout au long de cette si douloureuse affaire, le gouvernement avec persévérance n'a cessé d'agir dans la dignité et dans l'honneur. It was 1988. Iran was still mired in the war with Iraq. A year before, the UN Security Council had passed a ceasefire resolution that had been accepted by Saddam Hussein. But Ayatollah Khomeini would have none of it. حالا هم در حال دفاع هستیم دفاع معناش این نیست که تا اون گفت که یالا دست بده من با هم صلح بکنیم ما رها کنیم هاشمی رفسنجانی was Khomeini's most canny political advisor. He had been put in charge of the war effort. 
بله خب جنگ به جایی رسیده بود که طرف ما چراغ سبز گرفته بود به هر جا و هر نحوی که میخواد برخلاف مقررات بین المللی عمل بکنه امکانات هم به او میدادن After eight years and 800,000 deaths, Rafsanjani judged that the West's continued support for Saddam Hussein made it impossible for Iran to defeat him. He had to devise a way to make Khomeini accept the need for a ceasefire. We had a conversation with the the war. ما هم گفتیم با شناختی که از صدام داریم همه عراق رو بگیریم این بغداد دستش باشه این میمونه گفتیم ارز نداریم ایشون گفت اینو خودتون برید یه فکری براش بکنید ولی باید جنگ ادامه پیدا کنه رفسن جانی آسک دی جنرالز وات دی نیدد تو بی ابسولوتلی شور اف توپلینگ صدام یک لیست امتیازاتی تهیه یعنی امکانات تهیه شد تعداد زیادی هواپیما تعداد زیادی تانک تعداد زیادی موشک تعداد زیادی زده هوا، زده هوا، زده هوایی اولا به ما نمی فروشن و اگر بخوایم بخریم هم و بفروشند هم پول اینقدر نداریم هم سیاست مدارا هم فرمانده جنگ به این نجرسته بود که اگر نمی توانید جنگ رو به سرعت تمام کنید مقتعی است که آتش بس رو بپذیریم Rafsanjani prepared to put the case to the imam. He spent nights pacing the battlefield. احساس شد که برای ایشون سنگینی که اعلان بکنن با شعارهای قبلی که مخصوصا گفته شده بود اگر 20 سال هم طول بکشه ما ایستاده ایم. When he called on the imam, he took a chance that might have ended his career. من یه پیشنهاد کردم به امام گفتم که من جانشین شما و فرمانده جنگ هستم من اعلام میکنم مسئولیت به عهده میگیرم شما بعد میتونید منو محاکمه بکنید اگر به عنوان اینکه نظر شما نبوده و برای اینکه مردم بدونن شما راضی نبودید از این کار ولی من این کار رو میکنم ایشون یه نگاهی کردن گفتن نه این هم اقدام حقی نیست اقدام ناحق میشه و گفتم خودم میکنم خوشا به حال جانبازان و اسرا و مفقودین و خانواده های معظم شهدا و بدا به حال من که هنوز ماندم و جام زهرالود قبول قعدنامه را سر کشیدم Less than a year later, Khomeini was taken to hospital with stomach cancer. At his bedside, he regularly received Iran's president, Ali Khamenei, and Rafsanjani. With their help, he continued to rule the country. But then, he suffered a heart attack. <laughs> بیمارستان در جماران باشم وقتی که وارد شدم امام رو دیدم و امام هم چشمشون باز کردن منو دیدن به چشمشون به آسمان بود باز یه دفعه متوجه شدن که چشمشون بسته شد و امام لحظاتی بود که دیگه ایشون داشتن جان میدادن Ayatollah Khomeini had been one of the few real revolutionaries of modern times, an inspiration to millions. He had also been a ruthless, tough-minded political leader. مشکل بود که خوب شخصیتی مثل امام اون روزها ما در کشور نداشتیم که بتونه با آسانی جای امام رو پر بکنه. The top 80 Islamic clerics gathered to choose the new supreme leader. They had what follows filmed, 
but it was not broadcast for two decades. از بدید این حرف آقای شبستری رو میخوان آقایون آقای شبستری چیزی از آقای طاهری شنیدم که امام جمله درباره آقای خامنه ای گفتن اگر آقایون مایلن من نقل کنم و الا The film shows how Rafsanjani guided their choice. بله و ما با امام مباحثه داشتیم فردا ما گفتیم ما فردی رو نداریم الان که مطرح بکنیم تو جامعه چون ما فرضمون بر مرجعیت بود و با هم مسائل بود اما فرمودن چرا ندارید آقای خامنه ای The cleric who according to Rafsanjani had been chosen by the late ayatollah responded with a show of modesty ببینید من من در بحث آ من در بحث من به هر حال مخالفم موافق هستن قیام بفرمایید بشمارید The next day Ayatollah Khomeini was buried Soon after the funeral, Rafsanjani became president, number two in Iran's political hierarchy. America also had a new president. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. High on his agenda were the Americans still held hostage in Lebanon. His predecessor had got into serious trouble, attempting to do a deal that became known as Iran-Contra. We had no relations with Iran. We couldn't negotiate. We didn't want to negotiate for hostages anyway. And that led him to the notion of reaching out in a way to Iran with this subtle statement. There are today Americans who are held against their will in foreign lands, and Americans who are unaccounted for. Assistance can be shown here and will be long remembered. Then the president delivered a carefully crafted phrase. Goodwill begets goodwill. It was a signal, it was a gesture. You do something nice for us and we'll do something nice for you. Iran's new president appeared to be on a similar wavelength. ایران این آمادگی رو داره با اون کشورهای از غرب که آمادگی داشته باشند که سیاست برخورد مساوی و بدون باچخاهی و توسعه طلبی و انحصار طلبی با اینها کار بکنه It looked like a moment of optimism then, hostage takers in Lebanon released a video. Colonel Higgins, who was an American colonel, uh, had been in the UN Observatory Force and had been taken, and there were pictures of him released hanging. And they were just dreadful pictures. It was a, a searing experience. The president feared for the lives of the other hostages. I think the world is familiar with our policy, but uh, there will be nothing that will done ever that will create a new incentive for taking somebody else hostage. But I feel the burden of going to every end possible to try to find get the return of these Americans to their loved ones. Un coup de téléphone de Monsieur le Président des États-Unis, George Bush, père. Et, et alors il m'a dit sa préoccupation, son angoisse presque de la situation des otages. We explained to him we couldn't pay, we were not prepared to negotiate, but uh, we wanted help to get our hostages back. Le président serait disposé à faire certaines concessions aux Iraniens, mais à condition de que, que ça n'implique pas une négociation ou une intervention directe des États-Unis. 
he said he had somebody that he used uh, with Iran and with Hezbollah and could do it very quietly and very subtly. The Secretary General's troubleshooter, Gianni Pico, was sent to see President Rafsanjani. His mission was to get Rafsanjani to help America to get its hostages back. It meant asking him to take a big political risk. It was my first encounter with the Rafsanjani president. I walked into this office together with uh, Javad Zarif. We wanted the meeting to remain private, so we decided not to have a translator. I said to him, President Bush de facto asked to help in the release of the American hostages in Beirut, and that this help will not go unrewarded. Rafsanjani was just testing the UN representative. He soon made his conditions clear. اگر حسن نیتشون رو نشون بدن ما مطمئن بشیم اینا جدی و اگر کاری از ما ساخته باشه ما به خاطر هم لبنان هم به خاطر مسائل انسانی این کار رو خواهیم کرد The president said if the United States expects our assistance then it has to change its hostile policy towards Iran حرفی که داشتیم این است که در مسئله جنگ ایران و عراق تعیین متجاوز و خسارت ها Basically, that was it at that point. Neither the US nor Iran was yet ready for reconciliation. Then the entire balance of power in the Middle East shifted. Saddam Hussein opened the way. When he seized Kuwait, America mobilized a coalition to throw him out. And after the war, American forces stayed on, for the first time within easy reach of Iran. We believe the presence of foreign forces in the region are inherently destabilizing. Furthermore, we believe that the presence of foreign forces in the region, particularly those of the United States, have objectives which go beyond the liberation of Kuwait. And these are, in reality, sources of grave concern. So helping to get the hostages released now became a priority for Iran. President Rafsanjani m'a rappelé que les États-Unis devaient de l'argent à l'Iran, produit de la vente qu'ils n'ont jamais reçu, des armes pour le gouvernement précédent, le gouvernement du Shah. Alors je lui ai dit que j'évoquerai cette question avec le président Bush quand je le rencontrerai. Rafsanjani summoned the commander of the Revolutionary Guard. The general decided to show Hezbollah where the power lay. من اصرار کردم که تو تا اینا آزاد نشدن بمون اونجا وقتی بچه های از بلا دیدنشون خیلی اصرار میکنه ادی از آدم های تندشون شبانه و ساختمان بردر ما حمله کرده بودن چند تا آرپیجی زده بودن تو اتاقش که ایشون فرار کنه بیاد ایران ولی ایشون منده بود و با مسئولان از بلا بالاخره مسئله رو تمام کرد من من یملک المال یملک السلط دولة بحجب إيران ينافسها أفراد لا يملكون شيئا شيء طبيعي أن تغلبهم.
the steps with his father. Over the next two and a half months, one by one, the hostages were released. The last one out was an American reporter who had been in captivity for six years. Mr. Anderson, your freedom is a victory for all. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. I'm very grateful for you. When Terry Anderson was released, the president said, you know, it lifts a huge burden, not only the human part of the hostage, but it overshadowed everything we did on the Middle East. And suddenly that cloud was lifted. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Hostage taking is hell on a human scale. Now Iran waited for America's side of the goodwill deal. The Iranians starts calling me and say, well, you know, what's happening? What's happening? We are in a difficult position at home. They say the president has helped the Americans. And now where is the thank you note? Johnny Pico said the Iranians are expecting a gesture. And he said, we've got to be fair because I promised them. And I said, Johnny, I will try. I sat down with the National Security Council principals and we, we discussed it. And I said, we have a commitment. And the president was sympathetic to me. The problem, as I told General Scowcroft in that meeting, was the Iranians were now deeply engaged in other acts of terrorism that made it very, very hard to do anything to improve the relationship. In the three years since President Bush's promise, many critics of the Iranian regime had been assassinated in the West. America blamed Iran's leaders. And the Supreme Leader had issued a fatwa, calling on all Muslims to kill the novelist Salman Rushdie. When we said goodwill begets goodwill, we did not say, if the Iranians release the hostages no matter what else, we are going to respond favorably. We said goodwill would beget goodwill. Well, doing other acts of terrorism is not my definition of goodwill. Everyone else said Iran is behaving so badly in so many different ways that now to reward them by lifting some of the sanctions we had or uh, making trade deals or some of the things that would have, uh, that the Iranians would have wanted uh, is just impossible for us. And I lost, I lost the argument. وقتی که آمریکایی ها درست عمل نمی کردن به وعده هاشون کار ناقص می موند. Rafsanjani's gamble had not paid off. For his remaining five years as president, he made no further attempt at political reconciliation with America. In 1997, Rafsanjani came to the end of his two terms as president. The supreme leader and the establishment had chosen a candidate, and they were used to winning. But some sought an alternative. They turned to an unusually liberal cleric who was more likely to open doors to the West. <laughs> با استقلال و پیشرفت سازه کار میشه در دوران وزارت هم که بودم سعی کردم با توجه به همه شرایط این دیدگاه رو بهش وفادار باشم و در یک برهی احساس کردم که مشکلاتی وجود داره و استعفا دادم خاتمی had encouraged free expression this had angered the hardline supporters of the supreme leader but had won him backing among intellectuals and students. ایشون همچنین از اونجایی که منتقد وضع موجود بودن خب برای اکثریت مردم هم که اعتراض داشتن به شرایط موجود گزینه مناسبی بودن. طبعا با توجه به جایگاهی که رهبری در نظام ما داره و تأثیری که میتونن داشته باشن برای من مهم بود که ببینم که من اگر با این ایده و با این فکر میام نظر ایشون چی است؟ 
To persuade the supreme leader to let him stand against the establishment's candidate, Hatemi put a subtle argument. آیا خاطمی بهشون گفتم این ذهنیت وجود داره در جامعه که مثلا از قبل میخوان آقای ناطق نوری به هر شرایطی رئیس جمهور بکنن بهتر هستش که اجازه بده انتخابات آینده رقابتی باشه آیا خاطمی بهشون گفتم من هم میام و حالا مطمئنم نیستم که رأی بیارم ایشون هم استقبال کردن و طبعا از این جهت برای من هم یه موقعیت مناسبی بود که فکر کردم که دست کم رهبری مخالف نیستن با آمدن من Hatemi seemed to be facing an uphill struggle. Iran is huge, and he was not well known outside Tehran. As مسائلی که مشکلات جدی نامزد رئیس جمهور ما بود که هم ما امکانات نداشتیم، امکانات مالی محدودی داشت، و هم رسانه در اختیار نبود. و نگرانی نسبت به این که بشه با مردم ارتباط برقرار کرد، نگرانی مهمی بود. و من باید رو به رو به چهره به چهره با مردم همراه باشم و به همین دلیل با اتوبوس هم نوعا رفتم و تقریبا به همه مراکز استان سر زدم مردم برای اولین بار با کسی که میخواستم بهش رای بدن ارتباط مستقیم پیدا میکردن برای خود منم تحجب آور بود در همون دیدارهای اول استقبال مردم و احساس میکردم که مردم یک نوع تغییر و یک نوع تحولی رو طلب میکنن خب هر جا میرفتیم این حجوم جمعیت بود به این ستات ها صف های طولانی اساسا واقعا قافل گیر کننده بود Khatami won by a landslide, large enough to make him feel he could challenge the core of the Islamic Republic's foreign policy. The new president would have to tread carefully. The powers now passed on to him could at any time be overruled by the supreme leader. کسانی در ایران بودن که این بدبینی‌هاشون خیلی قوی‌تر بود و به هیچ وجه نمی‌تونن تصور بکنن که یک روز ما می‌تونیم با آمریکا در عین حفظ منافع ملیمون یک تفاهمی داشته باشیم که من معتقد بودم این نه لازم نیست که الی ابد اینجوری باشه He launched his new policy towards America by agreeing to an interview with Christiane Amanpour. Not only was she half Iranian, but she worked for the largest global TV news network. We got final word, CNN, that this in fact was going to happen. I was on my first holiday with my very serious boyfriend, who happened to be a State Department official. And I think her due diligence was to find out what the U.S. government was waiting to hear from the Iranians, and she had the U.S. government right beside her. Uh, so she did what any journalist would do. I went into, okay, what shall I ask him mode? And I did what I was supposed to do, which was to identify for her the things the U.S. government cared about. And I said to him, I have to ask about the hostages. I have to ask about um, uh, terrorism and the Middle East peace process. For Americans, it was the hostage taking that put Iran beyond the pale. I do remember saying to her, if Hatemi was really different, he had to acknowledge that Iran had done something wrong here. As the interview began, Hatemi and Amanpour were aware that the American government would be watching. A conversation with the president of Iran. Would you say that taking the American hostages at the beginning of the Iranian Islamic Revolution falls into the category of early revolutionary excesses? Thank you for your question. I do know that the feelings of the great American people have been hurt, and of course I regret it. 
I remember the words he regretted that this had taken place. He did not apologize, but he explained that this clearly had been a source of contention. Do you believe that killing innocent women and children is terrorism? As, for instance, what happens on the streets of Israel? It is definitely so. Any form of killing of innocent men and women who are not involved in confrontations with terrorism, it must be condemned, and we, in our turn, condemn every form of it in the world. This provided a really good opportunity to see whether there was some way to use that interview as a uh, launching pad for perhaps some kind of a different relationship with Iran. You say that you want to talk to the American people. Are you prepared to sit down eventually and talk to the American government? Dialogue between civilizations and nations are different from political relations. Right now, I recommend the exchange of professors, writers, scholars, artists, journalists, and tourists. So we understood he wasn't able to bring the regime around to having an official dialogue. And so our response was, fine, we'll go for the dialogue of civilization. The dialogue of civilization began with wrestling. The US sent a team to compete in the biggest event in Iran's sporting calendar. On the plane over, it gave us a briefing, kind of told us our do's and our don'ts. Um, you know, we couldn't walk around in shorts with our shirts off. Uh, we couldn't shake hands with the women. Um, just no political stuff. It was the first time any official representatives of the United States had entered Iran in the 17 years since the seizure of the U.S. Embassy there. When we landed there late at night, we all looked at each other and they gave a big sigh. <sighs> well, here we go. How do you feel about coming to Iran, please? I feel excited. What do you think about the Iranian team? Oh, they're good. <laughs> Wasn't what we expected, you know debt to America, all those things. I walk out in the stadium, kind of look out there, and it's just filled. There was people sitting on the steps. There was no place to sit. In Kushti, a very powerful and powerful force And in the fact, the war of Iran and America was coming After the match was over with, and he comes over to me, asked me if I would carry this picture out. You know, and of course I look at him and I said, am I going to get in trouble for this? Uh, you know, we're not supposed to do anything political. When I looked at it and I saw that it was his religious leader, uh, it was the second one, the one that was in power at that time. And I thought to myself, okay, it's a religious thing. I don't see any problem with it. I got up on the stance and just had it down. So I held mine up in the air. You know, we both had it up in the air and the crowd just went crazy. Uh, 
the dialogue of civilizations succeeded in getting its message to the top. But before dialogue between the states could begin, another allegation that Iran had sponsored terrorism had to be dealt with. A year before Khatami was elected, a truck bomb had killed 19 American servicemen and wounded 372. I thought, as soon as I heard the news, that I had to consider going to the scene. So I diverted my plane to Saudi Arabia and I visited the site. And there was this building uh, with the whole front of it just sheared off so you could see into all the rooms. Floodlights were illuminating it. It looked like a terrible movie set of devastation. Good morning. Let me be very clear. We will not resist, we will not rest in our efforts to find who is responsible for this outrage, to pursue them and to punish them. There was some evidence that Iran had been involved, and many people were advocating some prompt action against Iran. Last night, I directed an FBI team of 40 experts, investigators, and forensic experts to go there to work with the Saudi Arabian authorities. After three years, the FBI believed they had seen conclusive evidence. The FBI gets access to the prisoners that the Saudis are holding and we get the smoking gun that the Iranians were responsible for the Kobar Towers bombing. And we had to decide what were we going to do about it now. Some of Clinton's advisers argued for military retaliation. But the State Department argued that since Hatami became president, Iran's support for terrorism had declined. And the question was how to separate Khatami out from previous actions and not hold him responsible. We thought it was better to see if he would act against the people responsible, particularly the intelligence chiefs who had sent the bombers and the people that we believed were uh, involved in the bombing who had sanctuary in Iran. So President Clinton sent two aides to see a sultan in France. The drive was about an hour outside of Paris through the rolling countryside of the Seine River Valley to this magnificent residence. It was the summer retreat of a good friend to both America and Iran, Sultan Qaboos of Oman. I said, Your Majesty, we come here as envoys for President Clinton with a message that we would like you to find a way to deliver. ثم سألونا ما إذا كان بإمكاننا أن نوصل هذه الرسالة إلى يد الرئيس خاتمي شخصيا. We wanted to try to make sure that he was the only one who knew because hardliners in Tehran were doing their best to prevent him from going forward with his what we understood to be his desire to normalize relations with the United States. ولكننا نريد أن نعرف ماذا في الرسالة. إذا كانت هذه الرسالة تطوي على تهديدات فإحنا ناسف لا نستطيع أن نأخذ هذه الرسالة. I said the letter explained that the United States wanted to have a positive relationship with Iran, uh, but that there was this problem. We know that Iran was directly involved in a terrorist operation that killed 19 Americans, and we need some answer from the Iranians that they're going to hold those involved responsible and bring them to justice. His Majesty uh, said, we'll do whatever we can. Soon after, Amman's foreign minister arrived in Tehran with President Clinton's letter. Uh, يعني, الرئيس خاتمي 
أكد بصورة فيها كثير من الجدية أن أن إيران ليس لها دخل بما حصل في في الخبر. تحذيرش پیامشون معناش این بود که ما اتهام قبول کردیم در حالی که واقعیت نداشت. Iran maintains Al Qaeda was responsible for the Kobar bombing. No matter who was behind it, to launch the investigation the Americans asked for would mean challenging the most powerful forces in Iran. عدم آشنایی سیاستمداران آمریکا با اوضاع ایران با اوضاع منطقه سبب شد که اشتباهات بزرگی بکنن و اون فضایی که میتونست به نفع هر دو کشور باشه اون فضا تا حدودی بسته شد We got the response back through the Omanis. To put it simply, it was disappointing. But there was one place where American and Iranian interests coincided. Afghanistan. The dominant force there, the Taliban, was Sunni Muslims violently opposed to the Shia, the ruling group in Iran. Taliban احساس یعنی ایران رو دشمن خودش میدونست و این اسلامی که در ایران بود قبول نداشت. وجود کدا Taliban در شرق ما یک تهدید جدی استراتژیک برای ماست. In August 1998, the Taliban were laying siege to the northern town of Mazar-e Sharif. As the Taliban closed in, Iran's consul there made a desperate phone call to Tehran. The line went dead. The Taliban killed nine Iranian diplomats, including the consul. جنایت سازمان یافته این رفتاری که نسبت به نمایندگی جمهوری اسلامی ایران و دیپلمات های ایرانی شده بود توهینی به ملت ایران بود نه تنها بعضی از نظامیان بلکه بخشی از سیاسیون معنای واکنش رو فقط در چارچوب نظامی میدیدن ایران prepared to avenge its murdered diplomats We understand that Iran has deployed significant numbers of troops and equipment on its border with Afghanistan. So clearly this is a matter of, of serious uh, concern, and it's something we're watching extremely closely. To stop the escalation towards war, President Khatami and his foreign minister went to the UN General Assembly to try to get the international community to intervene. The UN Secretary General already had a working group on Afghanistan. It was the only place where the United States and Iran had official contact. Kofi Annan called me up to say that perhaps it was a useful idea during the General Assembly to have this group at ministerial level, which meant that I would be in the same room with the Foreign Minister of Iran. I ما را به گام‌های بعدی که 
حتی به حل مسائل دو جانبه هم برسونه نزدیکتر بکنه I was very excited about the possibility of having some kind of a breakthrough uh, because this was also the first time anybody at a ministerial level had met with the Iranians. I went to my side of the table and I smiled nicely. Secretary Albright was trying to break the ice. Uh, the Iranian foreign minister had been UN ambassador just the way she had been UN ambassador. And in her opening statement, she made a, a remark to the effect that, isn't it nice that uh, diplomats can go from UN ambassador to uh, foreign minister? No reaction. I thought maybe the translator had not done it right, and so I said it again. She said, some of us have been here and now we're foreign ministers. Now, I knew that he looked different, but people change, you know. I lost weight. And so I turned around to uh, my bank of experts, and I said, is this Harazi? And everyone kind of shrugged their shoulders because we had left the expert outside the room because everybody wanted to be in the meeting, and we only had five seats. Uh, and we actually didn't know who was the foreign minister or whether this leader of their delegation was, in fact, the foreign minister. I started uh, making a statement, uh, but, uh, presenting the views of, of Iran and also noting the areas where we had uh, similarity of interest. Kofi Annan said, isn't it nice that the deputy foreign minister of Iran was able to join us for this meeting if the foreign minister couldn't? And all of a sudden, I turned around to the guys behind me and said, yeah, now we know. We walked out of the conference and Secretary Albright began yelling at all of us, how could this have happened? Why didn't we know the Iranians were going to double deal us? Why didn't Dr. Kharazi attend this meeting? Well, Dr. Kharazi was occupied with the president. As you know, the president has a very heavy schedule, and he expressed his regret that he did not attend the meeting. I think that it was a matter of time for people who are more than me in the matter. And I think that if we are in the middle of the Certainly people who expected a, a ministerial uh, turnout uh, were disappointed. But the meeting wasn't bad, the meeting was constructive as far as Afghanistan was concerned. The Americans used their influence in the region to rein in the Taliban. President Khatami halted the march to war. As he rose to address the General Assembly, delegates had a chance to see Iran's foreign minister and his deputy, and to work out which was which. کوشش صادقانه برای مبارزه با تروریسم در تمامی اشکال آن و از جمله تروریسم دولتی یکی دیگر از نکات مورد اهتمام جمهوری اسلامی ایران است. باید برای ریشکن کردن حقیقی این پدیده شوم همراه با مبارزه با عوامل فعلی آن از طریق همکاری جدی و شفاف بین المللی در راه تحقق عدالت در جهان کوشش کنیم. The President's offer of cooperation against terrorism would soon be put to the test. The series concludes Saturday night at 9 on BBC Two. While on the BBC iPlayer now, explore the fraught history of our relations with Iran in BBC Four's Iran and Britain. <laughs>